we will restore, uh, bring these hostages back, uh, these sons and daughters of Israel back home. Uh, and that is our goal. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. Just a very quick intro to a full interview by a, a guy that I met yesterday who is an IDF soldier and he has 17 years in service. He's a decorated war veteran already and he's in a special engineering unit that will be going into the tunnels and clearing out the Hamas once the ground operation begins. And so I wanted to give you the full interview that I had with him. He also happens to be a Messianic Christian. And so his spiritual take on things is gonna be a little different than maybe some of his compatriots, but I think it's very interesting to listen to. And that's part of the reason why I started this podcast because when I make a package or when I do a live broadcast, I'm usually only able to give you just a tiny little sliver of what I am getting out in the field. And I wanted to be able to let you make more of an informed decision about the events that I'm covering by hearing the entire interview, if you like, and forming your own opinion on it. So take a listen. His name is Haim, Master Sergeant Haim, and I, I want you to enjoy this and leave comments below. Let me know what you think and make sure you like and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot. My name is Chaim Mailspin, same way as in Fiddler on the Roof. Lechaim, to life. Chaim means life. Uh, Jewish, Israeli, Sergeant Major in the Combat Engineer Corps Elite Unit for special missions such as tunnel warfare, etc. That's what I do. Wow. Um, Training for this must have been a very challenging process, uh, but it's, is it something that you have trained for for a long time or that you're just now like, what do we do? No, so it's, uh, I've been in the Army now, you know, on and off, but I've started in 2005 and then continued on reserves. So I've been in various missions, various wars, including 2006 in Lebanon, uh, as well as multi-missions in Gaza and war in Gaza got the pins and everything, uh, have already fought Hezbollah in the, in the north, uh, as well, the terror group operating in Lebanon, as well as in the south, the uh, Nukba force, which is the elite of the, the Hamas terror group. And so I've had uh, multiple, you know, I've been shot at, uh, I'm a machine gunist, but yeah, I've been training extensively on our uh, elite units, weapons and tactics for many, many years now. I mean, it's going on 20 years soon, but a lot of things have changed and there's a lot of uh, brushing up and uh, right now that's happening. Um, so that being the case, you understand. Come oh, closer, just a second. Okay. You understand what you're what you're up against here. Uh, what 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 are you up against? Yeah. Um, so I would say that the factors, the players involved on the chessboard, have strategically advanced against us. Very bad news. Since 2006, the second Lebanon war and on, there's been a, a huge revamping and, uh, and advancement of their powers, whether it's the Jabhat al-Nusra, whether it's the Islamic Jihad, whether it's, as I said, uh, the Radwan force in Lebanon, whether it's the Is al-Din al-Qassam forces mm -hmm. in, in Gaza area. Uh, and there's, there's factors that are operating in Syria. There's people operating in Iraq. There are people operating in areas that we we don't even talk about. Uh, and so all that working together, we have quite uh, uh, a time on our hands looking forward to be able to return security to our borders and also to dismantle the Hamas group. When we talk about what's about to happen, um, tell me about the motivation uh, level of the troops that you see here. Yes, all of my friends, all the troops here in the IDF, which is the defense force. Again, that's our job is to defend uh, and provide security to the citizens. I would say motivation, or let's call it a spirit of determination, is very, very high. I really love bringing in Ezekiel 34. And we follow the Good Shepherd, don't we? So we are also commanded to be good shepherds. There's a judgment on bad shepherds. Part of being a shepherd like King David, you know, many heroes throughout the Bible were good shepherds. And part of that is, is helping rescue the sheep of Israel, the house of Israel, those lambs stolen by wolves. And we will restore, uh, bring these hostages back, uh, these sons and daughters of Israel back home. Uh, and that is our goal. And I, I'd like to say, if you've ever watched a movie like 
you know, Mission Impossible. This would be extremely hard for Tom Cruise. This is a high stakes rescue operation to return these sheep of the House of Israel back home. That's one of the things that we're involved in. We talked about this being a very complex combined arms operation. Um, can you, there's people back home wondering like, why aren't you done yet? You know, like you said. Uh -huh. What, what's your answer to them when they ask you? Why aren't we done yet? Well, I'd say if they understood the complexity of underground warfare, uh, there's, there's, there's bombs that are underwater. Uh, there's things people can't even uh, think of. There's supplies from North Korea, the uh, F-7 rocket launchers from Pyongyang. Uh, there is, there's stuff that people haven't begun to understand in if you look across the Middle East, what's going on. And there's a line being drawn in the sand right now where people in every country, in every country, are choosing to either get their, their uh, Daniel mantle going of intercession and prayer and doing, doing an estimate. Esther Fast, uh, a bunch of people have joined in this global Esther Fast, and I'm excited, and, and jumping in to help families that are fleeing from, from or they're choosing to, to uh, be possessed by a demonic spirit, which is against the Bible, which is against Israel, which is against all things good and pure, and, uh, and aligning with barbarism, with, uh, with really uh, grotesque, murderous rage. And people can fall into the spiritual warfare uh, on all levels. So what is taking so long? Well, we have a long way ahead of us, and I'm talking years. Okay, it might not be battling for years, but it's going to be, once the initial battles are done, we're talking in years to fully see that future of Gaza. Okay, so what is it going to be? Will there be water parks? Will there be international? Will it become one of the Emirates? Will it be work with with the Emirates? Will it be in it with a lot of UN forces? How will it look? I don't know exactly, but we have to start with the start and we'll end with the end. But we're looking at years, and so we're no, we're certainly not done. We're just getting started. I like this, we have to decide what the actual what winning looks like first before we can, you know, not only do we have to figure out which targets to bomb, we have to figure out which uh, places to go and who's going to supply them and who's going to go there, but we have to decide what victory actually looks like. Correct. Absolutely. And what does it mean now? I hear people saying, uh, well, what is the proportionate amount of response? This is called a false dichotomy. Well, what should we act exactly like Hamas did? Start that again. I hear people talking about proportionality and, and saying, well, how many exactly did they kill? Should we act exactly like them and go and invade a peace festival? Well, there aren't any peace festivals. And go in and, and kill innocent lives and murder and take hostages? No. Uh, what we have to do is focus on the actual true thought, which is fulfill your mission, restore security, dismantle the threat. That's what we are here to do. And win victory, and victory is not over even then. We have to change. We've tried. I mean, you saw the whole free Gaza. We were out of there in 2005 completely and entirely. They would come in and work, as we know, and receive work permits. And, and uh, we see that they're not able to run a area and govern uh, in a godly fashion. So we're going to have to help them with that. People are so worried about the civilians, the innocent people in Gaza those same ones who were dancing in the streets when they found out what happened to you. But in some sense, it sounds like what you're planning to do is actually going to be the best possible thing you could do for the actual innocent people. Yes. In Gaza. Talk about that. Yes. Uh, you know, of course, our hearts go out to any innocents that are that are under danger right now everywhere. Absolutely. But for their best is to remove butchers, murderers, rapists. That's for everyone's best interest. Okay. Those people do not care about the Palestinian people, and that needs to be very clear. Uh, you know, if anything, we are helping the Palestinian people. People right now, it's a very hard and complicated and intricate and convoluted process right now. And there's many people in harm's way. There's a lot of work to try to warn them and say, please get out of harm's way. Please do not uh, stand near terrorists. Do not. We are dismantling an entire terror organization, which is very highly trained with, again, the weapons that we've seen are beyond what we even thought. And the skill is beyond what we even thought. We were unprepared, but we are now determined and ready to complete and fulfill that mission. Oh, okay, okay I want to read a verse before you totally end. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, one last question. Clearly this is a fight between God, uh, good and evil. Yes. Uh, can you send a strong message to these terrorist organizations that they are threatening the lives not only of Palestinians but also of Israelis? Come over here, sir. So you want to ask one more time? Right. Well, ask yeah. one more time, yeah. Clearly this is a fight between good and evil. Can you send a strong message to this uh, terrorist organization that are threatening the lives of not only What would your message be to yeah. Hamas directly? 
the message to Hamas right now, I'll look at, the message to Hamas right now will be, October 7th for us was like the Holocaust. More people were killed in, in that short of a time. Uh, your judgment day has come. And uh, when you meet your maker, the God of Israel, soon, uh, I don't think he'll like the way you've treated his anointed. And you can uh, check for yourself how God speaks to wicked evildoers. Our job is to dismantle you, and that will happen. Any who associate with you, whether they're Houthi rebels, whether they're in Iraq, whether they're in, in Iran, your boss is in Iran, all who oppose the God of Israel and decency and human life will be dismantled. And that goes across. So this is a line being drawn in the sand. And beware because your judgment day has come. I want to read a verse too. Uh, 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 I want to read an encouraging verse too uh, and give a prayer thing. So real fast, so I'll just, is it okay if I hold the phone? Is that yeah, weird? Okay, here we go. Uh, so I look at this one. Uh, look look right here. Right there, okay. Um, I want to leave an encouragement to any who stand for righteousness, freedom, patriots, who stand for God's goodness. And it's found in the words that Moses penned, well, with his quill on scrolls. Uh, Deuteronomy 33, verse 26 through 29. There is none like you, God of Yeshurun. Yeshurun, that is like the people who go straight forward after the Lord, who rides upon the heavens in your help and his excellency on the skies. Uh, the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before you and shall say, destroy them. Israel shall then dwell in safety alone the fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy are you, O Israel. Who is like unto you, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of your help? And who is the sword of your excellency? And your enemies will be found liars unto you, and you shall tread upon their high places. I encourage you all to keep praying for Israel, like Daniel, like Esther, to stand in the gap. There's a big prayer unity going on with the um, globalesterfast.com. All kinds of, it's beyond any ministry name now. We're all coming together to stand for righteous. You can pray for the defense of Israel, quick, decisive victory, wisdom for the leaders, uh, comfort for the families that are grieving. Pray for the safety of the hostages. We're going to rescue them. They got to stay alive. Uh, pray for healing for the wounded. There's thousands and thousands in our hospitals of wounded. Uh, protection for children, for civilians. Protect all these innocents. Strength for the medical personnel. They're working day and night. We all are. Uh, may they just somehow get supernatural strength, divine guidance, and peace in all of our hearts. We have, of course, Operation Right Now, the Emergency Aid Initiative out of the Aliyah Return Center. It's an initiative to help families fleeing from rocket fire, from terror. We are taking care of each and every one of them. If we can get them hot food, clothing, shelter, food, food vouchers. All this, of course, is very expensive, but we're standing in the gap together with you. So Emergency Aid Initiative of the Aliyah Return Center. God bless you from Gaza border area.